box and fill. Now that your initial sequence columns are in, we are going to continue to follow our sequencing plan, which will take us to boxing and filling within grid lines F, H, and 2 to 4, for levels 2 and parts of level 3. Hey, just wanted to stop you and tell you thank you for watching. It really does support us when you watch. Take the extra step, like and subscribe this video and or follow us. It would really help us out. Carry on, enjoy the rest of the video. Check us out at workerefficiency.com for more videos just like this. See ya. What is boxing and filling? Boxing and filling in general terms is taking our longitudinal supports or our horizontal supports and connecting columns to girders or beams and or even joists to columns or beam to beam. It all depends on the design of your structure. The idea behind boxing and filling is pretty universal for connecting beams and or joists. Boxing and filling is about securing your structure as much as possible as we raise it up. In the case for our office building, to secure our four columns in our sequence, we need to connect our girder beams from column to column, which forms our box. We then need to go beam to panel walls, and then we need to fill within our beams with smaller intermediate support beams. If we were using joists, those intermediate beams would be bridging that would act as our fill and prevent the joist from rolling. We need to have this mindset of securing our most recent installation. That's the idea behind box and fill. We are creating bays, blocking or boxing our structure. Let's look at our drawings to visualize this. Our columns are here. To continue with this concept of boxing, we will potentially set these beams here to form our initial box. We are going to set beam assemblies to 28A, going from column to panel wall, then fill that space with beam assemblies to 24A. We are then going to continue to box and fill the subsequent areas for the sequence we need to erect. We will then fill that box with these beams. Orientation, orientation, orientation. Just like our columns, our beams need to be lifted and connected in their correct orientation. And this is why it is important to know how to read your drawings and be able to assimilate which direction the beam should be facing. For example, let's look at this beam 228A here. This beam had connection plates running up and down the flanges of the web of the beam. Does it really matter which side is facing what direction? Yes, it definitely does. If we look at our erection sheets, specifically the partial framing plan for level 2, sheet E26 of our structure, we can see beam 228A here. Beam 228A will have four beams connected to it on the south face of the beam. South in reference to Project North. On the north face of the beam, we will have two beams connected to this beam, here and here. So looking at our assembly drawing for assembly 228A, we can see that this side with the four plates will be our south face, and then this other side with two plates will be our north face. It doesn't hurt to mark face orientation on the beam if needed north, south, east, or west faces. That's how we know the orientation for installation for this particular beam. The way we check and balance orientation for all our other beams and fill beams will be done exactly the same way. Stop. Now we need to talk about orientation for clip side or the connection plate. Looking at our column here, this column has a connection plate or a clip which we will connect our beam to. Does the beam connect to the left or right side of the clip? This is important as the orientation for the clip typically determines the center alignment of the beam to the column. The clip and the connection holes on the beam should always be marked. Typically, the marking is a circle with an X through it, indicating clip side. That's how you know what side of the clip the beam needs to be installed on. So, you need to pay attention to orientation of the beam face and orientation of the clip installation and connection. Reference your drawings and know how to read them. You can see examples of clip orientation in our drawings here. Now, this particular beam has six holes on either side of it. What if you connected this beam to the column without checking your orientation? If it was flipped and you were in the middle of trying to set fill beams that connected to beam 228A, you would be in quite the predicament. To make things worse, you also have the clip installed on the wrong side. Paying attention to these small details helps you be more efficient and will help you get the structure up faster. All right, let's go back to square one now that you know we box and fill while paying attention to beam orientation. We are going to set the first beam for our box connecting columns to column. Here, beam 228A, 2233A, and 336A. Our beams are staged off on dunnage next to our crane, and we are going to do a multi-rig lift. OSHA regulations allow us to lift up to five like materials at a time. As long as we have correct multi-rig rigging equipment rated for the loads and a crane that has the working load capacity for the load itself. Beams must also be spaced at a minimum of 7 feet apart. In steel erection, we call this Christmas treeing. 
These multi-sling rigging assemblies typically utilize the choker hitch configuration with latch hooks, attaching at the center of gravity of each steel beam. The center of each beam should be easy to find because we marked the center of the beams when we yarded them. The Christmas tree comes into play as the stacked steel may have this Christmas tree look to it depending on the sizes of your beams. We rig top down with each steel beam member being set bottom up. To Christmas tree our four beams, we will choker hitch and stack all four beams, slowly raising up the rig till we have all four beams off the ground. As previously mentioned, make sure that the Christmas tree is optimized to have the four steel beams set from bottom up. With clear communication with the crane operator and the operator maintaining control of the movements, we can position our rig for connecting and loosening each member. We are going to set both 233A assemblies, then we are going to set 228A and 336A. Remember how we dressed our steel? We stuffed two bolts on either end of the steel. This is where those bolts help us connect quickly and efficiently. When lowering and connecting our first beam to 33A, we will remove and then restuff the two bolts on either end of the beam, connecting the beam to the column wrench tight, but not to final tension. Once either end of the beam is secured by at least two bolts on either end, we can loose the beam from our rig or cut loose the crane, loosing one of four beams. Immediately after the beam is loosened, connectors or bolt up guys will stuff the remaining holes with bolts wrenching them tight all while ensuring that the plate clips are flush and flat to one another. Keep note that we are not bolting to final tension here. We will discuss this more when we get to detailing in the next section. The bolt up guys will use drift pins and sleever bars to adjust the beam around so that they can stuff the remaining holes with bolts. We will then set the remaining three beams. This process will be repeated for the remaining boxes, bays and sections. Boxing and filling till our sequence is complete. Once the erection sequence is complete, we will move on to the next sequence and then the next sequence, setting columns and then boxing and filling as we go. That is box and fill. Thank you again for watching. We appreciate it. Like and subscribe, follow and share this video. It really does help us out. If you want to learn more, check out www.workerefficiency.com to find out more about our training courses and the app that is coming out soon and it will blow your mind.